In today's episode, we're going to go through the 2010s decade and decide what is the best album of each year. You know, we started the podcast, you know, maybe around that 2020 mark, so we haven't had the chance to talk about previous years, so this is going to be a fun episode. Let's kick this off. 2010, is there any competition, bro? I have my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy there. I feel like that's the obvious answer, and I feel like the community would rip us to fucking shreds <laughs> if we had anything else here, because I feel like there's nothing really that else that's really kind of acceptable yeah. as an answer, but... There are a lot of great contenders. I don't want to lie to you. There's, you know, projects like Cush and Orange Juice by Wiz Khalifa. I had Kids by Max Miller. Which is kind of like a modern day chronic to me. Exactly. Um, love the smooth production on that one. So Wiz killed it. Mac Miller's kids, like you said. Yeah, I was. I had that one in contention as well, just because of the playful vibe of that of that mixtape. And I know that you know it holds dear to a lot of Mac Miller fans' hearts because you know when you're going through high school or when you're chilling in parks or you know with your with your friends, you always had this mixtape in rotation. You know, you have songs like The Spins on there, Nike's on my feet, you know, Kool Aid and Frozen Pizza. So many great tracks. Is that the one that rivaled MBDTF the most for you? No, I honestly had Man on the Moon two that was in contention. Really, there. that yes, close? Like, because okay. I, I'm a big fan of Man on the Moon two, and I think it's a lot closer of a race you know, to the first installment. And I'm going to be honest with you, like going back and having some of my favorite all-time Kid Cudi songs in there, like Mr. Rager and much more, I had to include it in contention for this pick. But 2010, MBDTF? Um, yeah, I think it has to be My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy when you're looking at just how dramatic yeah. that album was, when you're looking at the production from the horns to Mike Dean's guitar solos, from the features having, uh, you know, some of their best verses of their entire careers from Nicki Minaj to Rick Ross. I think that, you know, Kanye was firing on all cylinders there. That's facts. Amazing comeback album. But one that I had really close to it was How I Got Over by The Roots. Okay. And to me, that's probably their most somber album. And I think that what it has over My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy is the sequencing of that album, mm -hmm. the writing of it as well, some of the features from Blue Infante, so underrated. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just think that it's a great album about resilience, about loneliness, and about just overcoming struggle. So that was close for me. That was close. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's yeah. easily like this is this was the easiest decision to come by. This was one know? of them for sure. I, I mean, we have some couple easy years here because there was that one standout. But you know, for me, I think you consider it a top three album of the decade. You yeah, know, it goes into that conversation. The track run from one to nine is one of the best I've ever seen on any album. And not only that, but you're talking about that feature list. Name me a better feature list if you can. I I really can't think of it from the 2010 decade. Like it was really that stacked, as you said. And I think that overall, it was one of the biggest moments of that decade. Decade. So 2010 MBDTF, let's go on to 2011. You know, talking about the roots, I have Undone as my album of the year in that sense because, you know, you have some major contenders here. I had Take Care, you have Watch the Throne, you have Section 80, Live Love ASAP, Rolling Papers. You had some stacked projects coming People out this year. People sleep on the early 2010s, yeah. but like 2011 was fucking stacked it to was. be honest with you. And I do think though, when you're looking at every project that came out, Undone is the best by best the roots. Best in writing, best in sequencing. Top five concept yeah. albums of all time for me the That's way that take. bro the way they're telling you the story of this criminal whose life kind of unravels before your very ears yeah, absolutely. and they're telling the story in reverse starting off from the end of his life to the beginning of it is genius and I also think that a lot of people no, mm -hmm. don't give that album the love it deserves I believe it didn't even win the Grammy that year I think they ended up giving it to maybe Take Care yeah I believe it was Take Care uh, it, well I mean if you're in 2011 you probably well 2012 if one rap album Grammy the year it was probably Take Care at that point but my top three tracks on this album if you guys want to reference it Cool On Sleep and Tip the Scale those are my favorite tracks off of the album and I had the pleasure of going back to this you know this week for the episode and man what a listen you know it's not the most accessible album just because I feel like if you're going to lock into this track list you're going to want to understand but it's only 38 everything. minutes so I feel it's like 30 minutes but it's an important 30 minutes that's what I'm saying because of the runtime, it makes it accessible and you're getting some of the best production in hip hop history. Like those string quartets that they have are sensational. You're getting some of the best live production you'll see in hip hop. And I think that it was great the way that it kind of subverted all the conventions of a typical rap album. Exactly. And like so. I was going back and I was expecting it to be like a lot more jazzier just because it was the roots, but I found like it had much more of like an alternative tone to it where a bunch of different instruments were being played. You know, you might find some more rock based productions. Then yeah. you'll find those classic root jazz productions throughout the track list. Very um, and there's like a nice atmosphere that goes on in that soundscape. And Black Thought wrapped his yeah. fucking oh, ass off if as always, but Section 80 came close for me, bro. I mean, I feel like it's the one album that always ranks mm -hmm. too low in people's catalog ranking of Kendrick, and 
one of the best jazz rap rap, rap albums of the 2010s. The whole concept of him talking about the conditions that you know crack babies had to live through, and the whole Ronald Reagan era. Yeah, genius. Some of his, uh, Kendrick's best storytelling on songs like Keisha's song. Absolutely. And, and and you want to talk about memorable tracks? Cushion Corinthians on there. Rigor Mortis, High Power, Ronald Reagan era. Um, there's way too many great songs on there, and I, I think that even from a pen standpoint, it's one of his best written albums. I'm not even gonna lie to you, bro. Really, you're you're finding some of his career best performances in writing on that album. So definitely in contention. 2011 though undone, we can move on. It was groundbreaking. It has Absolutely. to be undone. Um, next up though, we have 2012 and. This is another year where I can't even fucking lie to you, bro. There's no competition with Go this for it. one. Say it, man. It's good kid Matt City. Absolutely. Without a doubt. I think that it was amazing that, you know, through Kendrick's words, he really stimulated everybody's imagination to have music turn into a movie. Yeah, it's one of the most cinematic albums that we've ever gotten within the genre. And even going back and going through the albums that did come out that year, 2012 was a pretty weak year. So this album definitely uh, carried... You still had some albums. Uh, I had, you like, had fin Finally Rich, Rich by Chief Key. Control, Control, Control System. System. Yeah, DC2 by Life Mill. Life is Good by Nas. Yeah, you had some albums, but I'm saying is that like as you progress through the years, you're going to find that there was better... I'm sorry, there was better years for hip-hop. I, I feel like this is one of the weakest years that I have on my list it's right now. It's probably the weakest, to be honest with it you. It is. But I definitely think Good Kid, Mad City is a modern day masterpiece. You could have the argument that it's a top 10 hip hop album of all time. I wouldn't look at you sideways. I think it's a top five West Coast album of all time. You can make that argument as well. And I just love what it did for hip hop because it revitalized the art of the pen and coming back in, you know, with this new flavor and cadence and having the accessibility factor next to it as well. So GKMC is definitely my album of the year. Yeah, for that I think one. it has to be. And when you're also just looking at the cinematic value, like the voicemails from Kendrick's yes, parents, sir. when you're looking at the prayer on a song like sing about me i'm dying of thirst everything was thought out to a t and i think that it's the definition of a timeless album this album yeah. spent 10 years bro on the fucking charts not only that but there's like this there, there's like this element of gangster rap to it as well yeah. that kind of goes under the radar for a lot of listeners because they think maybe hey it's more of a concept record it's maybe a bit more of you know uh i would say uh, people you know say it's a popular rap album so it is you know, of course it is but I, I do think that like for gangster rap it did have a bit of a revitalization bro like it was nice to see something so refreshing come out of that lane while still being able to mix it up with conscious hip hop so GKMC 2012 absolutely certified All classic right. um, if there ever was one um, that year but next up 2013 this is probably um, the best year for rap in the early 2010s. That's facts. I want to say you have Yeezus by Kanye West. You have Born Sinner by J. Cole. You have Acid Rap by Chance the Rapper. Watching Movies with a Sound Off by Mac Miller. You have The Internet by Childish Gambino. Run the Jewels by <laughs> you, Run the Jewels. You could go on with Album of the Year contenders on this one, but I'm going to go to Nothing Was the Same. Absolutely. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to go Nothing Was the Hey, okay, we're agreeing this We've episode. agreed on everything <laughs> up to this okay, fucking okay, point, okay, bro. Okay, but I, think, I, like I have it. a feeling that this won't last for that long. <laughs> All right, bro. let's see how long it goes for. But yeah. where can I start with? nothing was the same man i love the concept of the record and i feel like it's really a full circle moment for one of the most um i would say decorated careers of all time especially for drake like you know bringing in you know this cold canadian sound into a concept record that talks about you know his stature in the game talks about you know where he's at in his life and where you know he wants to go and calling his success for more years was just such a flex and provided you with some of the best music of the decade i mean you're also getting one of the best intro and outro duels on any album from this decade with something you know like Tuscan Leather and Pound Cake I find that's a super underrated element of the album itself and if you want great concept records as well find them in songs like Furthest Thing for example so you could find anything you want within this absolutely. album absolutely and let me know if you agree with this but I always felt like in a way nothing was the same was Drake's version of Graduation just because yeah. When you think about him wanting to go back home to Toronto and kind of being that little boy back in his mom's basement, the way that he shows on um, on the album cover, I always felt like it was kind of like a coming back home story. Yeah. Not only that, but I also think that it's the best produced album, in which it's a very hot take. I think it's the best produced album of that year when you're looking at the manipulated vocal sample from Winnie Houston on Tuscan Leather, the three beat switches on that song, the Al Goulding sample yeah, but on I mean, Pound Cake. Yeah, but I mean, like when you have DJ Dahi, Boy Wanda, and 40 taking care of all of that production, like, you know what's going to happen with that album and that track list. So even like you were saying, the soundscape is super underrated and it's atmospheric. It but gets moody. You know, there's time changes, there's beat switches, and it always kind of keeps you on the front edge whenever you're going through it. Some people argue that like, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a soundscape like any other Drake album, but I totally no. disagree with that. I feel like it's much moodier. It has kind of this warped soundscape that kind of sucks you in at every turn, like mm -hmm. the way that, for example, 
the B from Wu Tang Forever kind of bleeds into the beginning of Own It. Exactly. Like, the sequencing on the album was phenomenal fantastic. as well. And I think that you're also getting some of Drake's all time best like hit songs. Hold on, we're coming home is a fantastic track. You know, Major Jordan. I think that even going back to that year, such a memorable track and one of you know Drake's all time best as far the as quotables, that goes. bro. This exactly. is nothing for the radio, but they'll still play it though. A fun like, fact about NFR is that that's yeah. actually uh, w- that's one of the reasons why we named our podcast NFR was because of Tuscan Leather, the no- the not for radio bar. So shout out to Drake. Definitely nothing was the same in 2013, but 2014. There's a lot of albums you can yes. put into this conversation. 2014, Four Sills Drive. Oxymoron by Schoolboy Q's a sleeper. Run the Jewels 2. Faces, Piñata, The Waters by Mick Jenkins. But I think I'm going to have a hot take here. I'm going to go Sylvia Demo by Isaiah Rashad. What do you got, buddy? You got Sylvia Demo by Isaiah I got, Rashad. I got Sylvia Listen, Demo by I, Isaiah I love Rashad. that album. I think it's Isaiah's best. I do not think it's the best album of that year. And I think that there's quite a few that are above it, bro. Okay, I'll make Faces okay. by Mac Miller uh, is ex- better. I think Piñata by Freddie Gibbs is a better album. But my pick, honestly, I was kind of struggling. And I feel like... You know, it's it's hard to say that like some people have are dead set on like one album for every year. Yeah. I was really tussling between Piñata and 2014 Forest Hills Drive. I can go either way, but I ended up going with Forest Hills Drive. Yeah, you went in the, yeah, I think that was another album that I had in contention. My three run was going to be Piñata 2014 and Sylvia Demo, but I'll explain to you my reason for yeah. Sylvia Demo. I think it is the perfect blend of cloud rap, lo-fi and southern hip hop put together into one kind of demo like, you know, album that feels raw. Um, very raw and that feels very emotional not only that but there's a no skip policy on this album you cannot find a single bad track on here it's a super consistent listen from start to finish and even songs like webby flow modest heavenly father you know even if you want to go to something like let's say you know kevin miller you know great song concepts all the way throughout and you're also getting great tde performances maybe at the you know at the peak of their dominance with sis on the album with j-rock with schoolboy q you know sis is on ronnie drake and she's also on west savannah which you know are completely different in contrast because Ronnie Drake is more of like a you know conscious you know driven song while West Savannah is more emotional yeah more around the romantic type of vibe but I love the versatility of the album because even you know Loki songs like Modest for example have been in my rotation for years and I can make the argument that this is a top five album from TDE's camp and I could say that with it's definitely yeah it's definitely one of the best that TDE's ever put out I just think that when you're looking at what's the best album in terms of the messages in terms of how polished the actual final mix is. I think 2014 Forest Hills Drive kind of surpasses it. And I think that a big reason for that is that Cole took us through an amazing, I mean, an amazing journey mm-hmm. with that album, taking us through kind of his desire to be famous and to get all the accolades and then realizing that he already had everything he needed in life before he popped off. Like going back to a song like Love Yours and the impact that that had, I think that's one of the most important messages on any hip hop song, period. Then you go to him kind of climbing the ladder to reach the throne on a song like yeah. January 28th where he, com- where he compares himself to Rock Him. That was fucking legendary as well. And um, yeah, I just feel like this album is all about kind of Cole finding his happiness and it translates kind of into... The audience kind of having a happy experience. This is one with of my it. bias picks. I'm going to be honest with you. This was one of my more bias picks. Where yeah, I was but like, no, but it's, it's and, fair. It's fair. It, it, it is, I'm, I, not, I can, I'm not going to flame you for it, bro. No, I, I, could I think there's better albums, I, I, but I, more than one. But I, I made the argument for it. I think yeah. there's definitely, definitely some reason. There's a case behind. to be made. I, absolutely, and I think that you know, looking back at that year, this is one of my favorite listens, at least for now. So maybe in the future it changes. Okay, so guys, listen. 2014, I have Sylvia demo. Lou has Forest Hills Drive. But let's keep going on with this. 2015, no fucking debate to pimp a butterfly. Flight. It has to be this, bro. It's one of the greatest hip hop records. What if I records. told you I didn't have to be a butterfly? No, flight. stop it. Get out of my fucking face, bro. Stop this. <laughs> and I, did you? No, 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 of okay. course I fucking have it. <laughs> All right, on, thank bro. you. Uh, so let's see your reaction. Okay, but no, so, there's still fire albums that came oh, out in 2015. Like a fuck ton of them. You had Rodeo by Travis Scott, you had DS2, DS2 by Future, yeah. kind of the peak of trap music Tetsu for this and year. Youth, at Long Last ASAP, Summertime 06, Good AM, Before the Cash, Mr. Wonderful by Action Bronson. If you're reading this, it's too late. This super slept on two for that year. And I mean, it's just no competition though like no, this is not <laughs> this is it's one not. of the greatest albums that have been put out in the genre it's my favorite tied with 2001 at the top if you guys watch the podcast you know that so um yeah i had to pip a butterfly there i think that when you look at you know the flawless concept of the record how everything's woven in together as this giant poem to tupac you know dedicating his career to what you know he left behind as his legacy was beautifully done um even talking about the progressive writing that that's in this album like you're finding you know themes and ideologies that kendrick touched up uh, touched up upon in 2015 that are still transpiring in society to this day so i think even from you know looking at you know 
looking at it from a, a world standpoint, it definitely touches on that. And I think it is the perfect blend of G Funk and Neo Soul. I've never yeah. heard an album and or soundscape I, like that. I think that. it's genius how like he's rapping and writing about the century old problems over um, a genre that is also, you know, over a hundred years, and you're talking about the jazz infusion on this project as well. And I think that um, what's cool is that it, you know Kendrick is kind of playing on that parallel yeah. of like, you know, the the culture and the history repeating itself mm -hmm. at the same time. Apart from that, I just think that um, you know Kendrick's voice here, the way that he was able to be a voice for the generation, and kind of not really having all of the answers but kind of giving his perspective on things through his own experience, through his survivor's guilt, through his experiences in Africa and how and what that taught him. Um, song after song, you're just left blown away. Bro. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a masterpiece. So 2015, I think the Pimba Butterfly is definitely a lock, but let's go on to 2016. This is where stuff gets a bit dodgy. I think we're going to have different answers We're going to definitely I have different so. answers here. So honorable mentions for me, Blank Face LP, The Life of Pablo, The Sun's Tirade, um, Honor Killed the Samurai by Ka, that's yep. definitely in contention. Atrocity the Exhibition by Danny exhibition. Brown. And you know, we got it from here, thank you. Uh, and then after that, I had Fly God as well. Honestly, we got it from here was in my contention. That's I was, my pick. I, I, it had to be tribe, had to be my pick. Okay, here. I, I had I had for your eyes only. For on your this. eyes like, only. Okay, yeah. so listen, bro. I mean, I think for your eyes only is arguably J. Cole's best album. I, I think, think that, you know, it's super consistent in its sound in terms of those jazzy instrumentals, which Cole contributed to a lot of those. I think the way that narrative is kind of fleshed out, it feels like one complete thought. Well, not I a, love that, not but um, when it comes to For Your Eyes Only, I feel like there is a skip on it. And when you have one skip out of 10, it weighs it down a little bit. But on the other hand, we got it from here. Thank you for your service is a skipless 16-track double album. I, I know. I, I know. And I had it in contention. I definitely did have it. But like... I am if I was if I was gonna like here again my bias maybe went into okay. a bit over here but I could definitely make the argument when you're talking about a, a ten track album that perfectly encapsulates you know being a product of your environment and the cycle of life and the way that he was able to put that into such a cinematic setting for me was super well done I think the writing is flawless on it I mean folding clothes is obviously you know not the greatest song in his catalog I had it at the bottom end when we did our ranking but even when you want to talk about you know the blend of conscious rap and jazz rap coming together for this soundtrack. Track. I feel like it was flawlessly done. I also feel like you're getting some of the best songs of the decade on this album with songs like Immortal, Change, For Your Eyes Only. There's a stack track list here full of quality and also the accessibility is on point for this album too because very you know tough and progressive ideologies were being presented throughout this track list but still it's one of his highest selling albums. It was one of the best selling albums of the year and this was made accessible for everyone and that's what I love about it is that it was kind of like Jake Cole's concept record but still low-key reached the millions that he wanted it to reach and that's what I love about it is that it has that universal message I had it on my For Your Eyes Only pick it's so. a great pick I just think that you know we got it from your thank you for your service was an amazing testament the to the greatness bro. from Tribe for them to turn in an album that great 25 years after their debut it's just a perfect way to end off a catalog the way they made this a tribute to Fife Dog was absolutely beautiful and I think that when you're looking at even the song concepts on this album, looking at a song like the intro space program and how that's a metaphor for how African-Americans have been excluded from so much in society, talking about gentrification. Even when you look at a song like Melatonin and mm -hmm. how that was kind of them rapping about the drug culture in modern day hip hop, I felt like this was kind of their spiritual goodbye to hip hop and them kind of telling you, we laid down the bricks, we gave you the foundation. Now it's up to you guys to kind of run with it. And they actually do that on a song like This Generation where they're shouting out Kendrick, Joey, Earl Sweatshirt, J. Cole. This is kind of their goodbye. And what's beautiful about this album too is that they went for a totally new and quirky soundscape. It is. Where you have, um, you know, all kinds of different sounds. Of course, they stay true to their foundational sound of having these deep bass grooves and having this jazzy soundscape. But they also kind of modernized it and gave you some more rock influence. They gave you production that was kind of more uneven and more sparse throughout it. You have these unresolved chords. Like, the way that these arrangements were put together, it was genius. I think it's the most interesting and unique soundscape Can I ask of you that a question? year. Do you think that this album is on par with something like, let's say, Midnight Martyrs or let's say even something I think like so. The Lower End Theory? I think that, you know, you could argue that it's it ranks third in Tribe's catalog behind Midnight Marauders and The Low End Theory. I really oh, think that it's take. up there and it's just... To me, it's just the essence of tribe stayed intact. Just that camaraderie of 
freely passing the mic to each other and kind of just having so much love for the craft. Um, it's a genius album. The rhymes really sting deep and it's a masterpiece. It me. is a masterpiece. One of the absolutely. best of the decade, but let's move on now to 2017. And when you're just looking at like the fucking list bro of albums that came out yeah, this year, yeah, 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 just yeah, like yeah. 2018, I feel like 20, excuse me, 2017 and 2018 are probably the two most stacked years. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. It's up there. And you know, I have, I'm not going to put damn, I don't have damn as my album. Really? Of the year that surprised there. me because we actually did an episode. I don't know if you guys caught it, but this is probably a year back um, where we were talking about the best album of 2017. And, the whole debate between you and I was Dam versus 444. I, I finally went with 444 for my you selection. your mind? I changed my mind on it. Yeah, Good but man. listen, my, <laughs> I know. My honorable selections, though, I have Dam, I have Flower Boy, Layla's Wisdom. Um, yes, Forever, by Rhapsody. Yeah, um, you know, Forever is a mighty long time. The Forever Story, Without Warning. More Life as well is super slept on within uh, this year. It's not in contention, though. I had it, though. It's one of my most enjoyed albums of that year. Does so it I match want to up shut to Flower Boy? Like? It, it doesn't, no. But I mean, like, I could still have a conversation that it's one of my most played and enjoyed albums from that year. So I just wanted to give it a quick yeah. Shout out, but when you want to talk about a, a tight and concise track list, you know, provided by No ID, where Jay Z is literally just laying it all down for you, which he never really did in his career before, and he only got to maybe like 30 years later, I found it was You're just saying such the a first big time you ever tapped in with one producer, right? Well, no, I mean, like, just like the type of content matter. Well, yeah, it was that one of the too. first, it was one it's, of the it's first, the first time you ever worked exclusively yeah, with one producer with, one, with No ID, yeah. And yeah. what was cool about the record, too, is that if you go through Jay Z's catalog, obviously, you're going to find a lot of luxury talk, you're going to find, you know, the gangster rap stuff that he was doing or you know in the late 90s and also in the early 2000s but you'll never find a vulnerable like here's my actual you know me pulling the curtain and showing you everything that's going on behind all of the jay-z stuff and it's all for you guys now yeah. it's your art and i think it's one of the albums that's motivated the, me the most as a person from that year looking at songs like marcy me legacy you know smile there's so many it's great all tracks the game is kicking bro uh, that's bro, what it is one of the notes i had here bro was literally a billion dollars worth of game for a 9.99 like that's Which, the best i think way it's I on story of OJ. It is, but, that, right? but uh, yeah, it's yeah. true though. Like, it is. This album is, is so you know forward thinking in the way that you should be approaching your life and the way that you should be handling situations that you could go into this track list and you'll find the theme for everyone in here and i think that's what's cool about it is that a billionaire is making you relate yeah. to him with simplistic writing to and a certain i think extent. that it's just because of how vulnerable and sincere he is on this album yeah. because he said the whole idea going into this album was to rap about things that he's never rapped about before and i feel like 444 feels like a snapshot moment in jay-z's life where he's kind of, you know, it's kind of a tell-all story where he's going through his infidelities and he's kind of, um, you know, picking himself apart, going through his own flaws, how he wants to improve as a man, mm -hmm. talking about his family and how they've kind of formed him, his upbringing, um, taking you back to the Marcy projects on Marcy Me, um, even the sampling, bro. I mean, he's sampling Stevie Wonder, Nina Simone, the Fugees, even a song like Bam, that was fucking amazing with that four-piece Horn section. Even Damian Marley on that song was oh, fantastic. My yeah, no, it's it's a flawless album in my opinion. So bro. concise too. It, it is, it is, and and realistically, like Jay Z could end his career today, and I would be happy with having four 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 as the final send. -off. But then there's the argument that you know Nas ended up being dominant in four decades. And hope stopped in 2017. Nah, that's all. There's bullshit. still that rivalry that's there, all bullshit. bro. I, I still. I, okay, well, but who, do you, who do you have over who, bro? One big reason why I still have Nas over Hove is because of the longevity. Yeah, but I still don't think that any of the King's Diseases or Magic stack up to 444. I I'm think sorry. I think Magic. No. It comes yeah, no. from ra bar no. for bar, bar no. for bar. I, as a record no. and an album, as a record and uh, an album, no. even musically. Listen, I, I do think the rapping is on par. It'll it will forever Maybe be on better. par. Maybe hey, hey, let's calm it down here. Four 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 still clears Magic, everything for bro. me. I know, I, and I had it as uh, because I, I did twenty twenty one. I know we only went up to twenty twenty, and I had it as one of my honorable mentions for yeah. one of my favorite of the year. And but even King's Disease two yeah. is phenomenal, bro. It, it is phenomenal. I go back to it, you know, practically every week. But twenty seventeen four four four. Um, let's go into twenty eighteen. Swimming by Mac Miller for me, bro. I'm gonna get into this right away. Like I, I had so many albums in contention here. Daytona, Care for Me, Astral, Tana Talk three, Fetty, you know, Die Lit. There's a lot of albums that I do have in contention here, but bro, swimming clear. Kitsy Ghost, absolutely, another fucking flawless album it too. Is. Victory Lab by Nipsey Hussle, um, Oxnard by Anderson Park, and you know it's interesting that you chose swimming. I knew you were gonna you were gonna kind of go there, but 
I had to go with Taboo by Denzel Curry. Uh, I had to go with Taboo. You know, it's a spicy take, but I, I, I respect it, though. I definitely respect it. So what do you like about Taboo? You know, I know you're such a big fan of the album. I think, you know, if you had to make a list of your fucking top 10 favorite albums personally with, you know, all kinds of bias. I don't even think I, this is there. not a bias-based answer, <laughs> though. I, I truly believe that you could make an argument, and I will make an argument for go why for it, I think it. that this is the best rap album of 2018. I mean... First of all, I think that it was so important that you had a 23-year-old 23, a 23 rapper who was seen as one of the pioneers of the SoundCloud rap scene um, that ended up making an album like this where he's really taking you through all the madness and the corrupt politics within the music industry. Yeah. And that's what this entire album is about. Yes, you're getting personal moments from Denzel on songs like Taboo where he goes into you know his own child molestation experience and some very deep and weighty topics, but... The reality of the album is someone's progression through the music industry as they move on yeah. and how at first they're lured by money. And first of all, the the fact that he divided this album in three acts for it to play out like a theater and show. I love, yeah, and I love the way that it was released too. Amazingly, you know, put together, really refreshing. But l back to my point, first, you're lured in by the money. Then you're kind of chasing that money. You're on that high. And then you realize that there's people out here exploiting you. And then you have a song like Cloud Cobain where mm -hmm. he's rapping about the relationship between the artist, the consumers, and the actual executives and how some consumers it actually want concept. you to almost kill it yourself is, is, and pop is. pills and do all this crazy mm -hmm. shit. And at the end of the day, you're the one putting yourself on the line while everybody else is profiting. So I think conceptually, masterpiece from versatility. The versatility on this album from Kendrick giving you these heavy metal performances towards the uh, end. Denzel, you said Kendrick. My bad. Denzel giving you these more heavy metal performances towards the end. His more melodic stuff at the beginning. The flow switches. I think it beats anybody else's performance in 2018. Uh, I'm going to disagree with you there because I think where Swimming Gets It is on the emotional depth of the album. And I think Taboo that, has that not, too? I, I, not on the same level as Swimming. I think it's a masterful track list with no features that you know really lets you connect to Mac Miller in a different way. And as I've said many times about Swimming, you literally feel like you're in a therapy session, you know, with Mac Miller and the whole concept of staying alive, you know, staying up, you know, keeping your head above water, keep going in your darkest moments. That was perfectly executed throughout this track list. And same thing, if you want to talk about versatility on this album, not, you not got on to, Denzel's level. You got to, you see, that's where the personal bias comes from. How because, is that? But tell okay. me, bro, this guy literally gives okay. you heavy metal, melodic performances, and then hardcore rapping. Okay, with so you'll get an exa example, like you'll get something that has, you know, more of like a, a, a funk based tone, let's say on something like ladders then you'll get something Forget production i'm and, talking about max no, no, performance exactly. and his vocals yeah, absolutely you know with the, the rhythm that he was catching and the way that he had those singing performances that bleed into the actual track itself then you go into something like 2009 a lot softer a lot more somber in approach then you get Master everything for, is somber but, for the most part in that no album. Not, not because then Mostly. you go on to something like hurt feelings jet fuel and then after that self-care a lot more you know i would say not aggressive to a certain no, extent but a, a lot more conscious writing for mac where you see him a lot more in his hip-hop element but listen i love taboo and i I think you could happily, you could easily have the, have it into this conversation. But for me, over time, I do think that this is one of the best albums that have come out in this decade. It's fucking flawless. And even looking at like you know what this album means to me personally, like I'm gonna come in with the bias. Like this has helped me through so many times, and I feel yeah. like the community you know, feels the same way about it too. So even it being like kind of like, you know, that pillow for so many people and so many hip hop fans, I had to include I have it as zero my flaws one. to pick apart with, with with swimming. I think it's a perfect album and I think it's one of my favorite albums of all time. So it was definitely tough to choose Taboo over it. And again, I chose Taboo from an unbiased perspective. Because if anything, as well, of you today I probably do listen to swimming more than I listen to Taboo. Yeah, and it's it is a more accessible more album. replay value. Yeah, there towards, is more replay uh, value swimming. But um, let us know, guys, what your, what your take was for 2018. Just because I know it was a stacked year, but let's move into 2019 now. Yeah. And this is interesting because some of the ones in contention for me were Psychodrama by Dave. I had the plugs I met by Benny the Butcher. I had Eve by Rhapsody. all my heroes are Cornballs by JPEG Mafia. Retropolitan by Sky Zoo and P Rock was big for me. The plugs I met by Benny the Butcher. Everything's was in there. for sale by Westside Boogie. Brandon Banks by Max o Cream and so many more. But listen, are we gonna put Igor into the convo? Because if I we didn't. are, I didn't. I would probably put it as the album of the year, but it's not really a rap album. No, and I don't think you can because like there was like you know the synth pop element to it and like the neo soul element to it like he's not really rapping all that much throughout the album it's more singing performances and auto-tune crew why it's unfair to kind it, of put it is it and like for me it's bandana album of the year I, I got bandana yeah for, for me it's bandana yeah. and it's like how are you going to be able to compare and contrast a track list like igor to something like bandana it's absolutely impossible in my opinion i think 
that this is Madlib and Freddie Gibbs' best collaboration. I know a lot of people say it's Piñata. Don't worry. I do think that it's up there too. But, yeah. you know, th- this is a-, a masterful album. Like, this is really one of the best works of art that I've gotten out of the gangster rap, you know, lane for the 2010 decade, bro. All of the Japanese samples that are being used throughout the track list, the sequencing, you know, the personal anecdotes from Freddie, either if it's, you know, him in the Coke game or him selling drugs to his own family or him talking about, you know, him being back, you know, in his hometown and what he had to do to break out with his career and it's an emotional track list as well and you're getting all-time great freddy songs on this you album are. too but i'll give you my top three i want to know how you feel about this i have fake names number one i have situations at number two and i have education at number three that's my top three off my the theory. definitely freestyle shit for me is up there palm olive was in contention palm olive yeah and then Giannis with Anderson. Yeah, and Those even talking... Even bro, education, bro, with Yassine yeah, Bey. But, but, that, but that's what... Wow. Oh, dude, listen. L- let me read out this feature list, too. Anderson Pac, Black Thought, Yassine Bey, Pusha T, and Killer Mike. What else do you want out of this fucking album, bro? You're not going to find anything out of it. And it's a no-skip on a 15-song album, bro. Like how, like how you had it for your 2016 pick, I think this encapsulates it, you know, in the same way where, like, you could find a lengthy track list, but, bro, you're engaged and locked all the way through, man. Yeah. What an and album. And the fact that, I mean, Madeline made all these beats on his ipad apparently like that was always a fact that kind of blew my mind and um yeah it was definitely them kind of tapping in once again i do think pinata superior but in terms of this album yeah you're definitely getting some of um the best flows and cadences and just energy from freddie in comparison to anything else that came out in that year um but yeah freddie was definitely on a terrible and you're looking at from 2018 all the way up to you know 2020 I mean, for 2020, are you going to go Freddy again? I'm going to go Freddy again. I have Alfredo wow. on that one, man. I, I, I do not have Alfredo well, Okay, on but I, I think Alfredo is a lock for me just because okay. like, from a rap album standpoint, I, I don't think there's uh, there's an album better. I, I think there are albums in contention. Example, like Conway's From a King to a God, uh, RTJ4, Written yes. Testimony, um, No Pressure, also Burden I love of no Proof. Pressure, uh, bro. Burden of Proof, you know, The Price of Tea in China. And I feel like this was the best year for Griselda releases to it a was. certain extent. I had so many different albums yeah, that pray came for out of Paris that year too. exactly you did have pray for Paris in that year as well and I, I I love what the Griselda boys were doing in this year but I still think Freddie and you know the Alchemist got everyone on it bro the, the the sample choices were the best of the year um I also think that it was the best coke and gangster rap album of that year as well I disagree the fe- um the, the feature list was perfect Rick Ross Conway Benny Tyler and more and then after that again it's a super short track list bro only 10 songs so concise and you're having great rapping performances on songs like baby shit you know, you're having, you know, great fucking tracks on there. Like, you know, God is Perfect, 1985 as the intro. Like, so much quality to go throughout that track list. I had it as my number one. But what do you think is a better album than Alfredo? Um, First of all, I think there's quite a few. Oh, that's not, a hot there, take. Listen, that's a hot take, as, Lou. As God Intended by Shea Noir is really high up there for me. It probably is. ranks number two. If you guys haven't heard As God Intended by Shea Noir, produced by Apollo Brown, um, one of the best albums of that year. Amazing. Um, one of the best songs. songs of the decade, Loki. Yeah. You can make that argument. If it's up there in that echelon, you can make an argument for Amazing it. album. Also, Miles by Blue and Exile. That's up One there. of the best soul jazz albums that I've heard sampling Miles Davis and just giving you these streams of thought that are masterful. But my album of the year, I know it's a hot take. I know that every time I've given this opinion, nobody's really agreed with me. It's Burden of Proof by Benny the Butcher. Yeah, you can make that argument. I, I, I still really hold that true to my heart. I think that... It's kind of been the closest version or album to the Blueprint that we've gotten since the Blueprint came out. And that's thanks to Hit Boy's amazing production, the electric guitar riffs, the multiple horn sections. It felt triumphant. And I think that what's super important about this album is that it kind of broke Benny away from the shackles of the production that made him. It wasn't that usual gritty, lupe sample production that, that Griselda was known like for. Butcher, this yeah. really kind of was a step up for him. It made him, you know, kind of have a more accessible soundscape. And when you're looking at songs like Trade It All, where he's kind of showing you his battle scars and kind of talking about how you know, he would trade the money and the fame to get his brother back that he lost. Like, I think the emotional depth is better on Burden of Proof than it is on something like Alfredo. I think the highs are higher looking at songs like War Paint as well. That's the best posse cut that we've ever got. Well, posse cut. Well, you could from say Griselda? Like, yeah. Like it's the, up the, there. From, well, I, you could say like, you know, the, the, the trio of Benny, Conway, and West Side Gun. I think that's their best um, collaboration. I don't disagree with you, bro. It's a top three album of the year for me. And I and would you, have you, you had that as your album of the year too back I, I did, then. I did. But like, as I've been going on, Alfredo. Alfredo 
Alfredo was, I, it. Alfredo is way too strong of a track list for me. I think it's a better sampled album as well. I love the production way more on Alfredo than I do on Burden of Proof. Okay. And even rapping performances, Loki, you can make the argument that Freddie does get him ah. on Alfredo. You do, you do. I think Freddie Gibbs is a better rapper than Benny the Butcher in certain instances. But at that point, that's just like lunch table talk. You know, yeah. they're both they're, they're both great rappers that delivered great albums. 2021, you just want to go over your album of the year real quick? 2021, I mean, it's not part of the list, but I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll just announce it. How about that? Sometimes I might be introverted. Sometimes I might be introverted yeah. by Little Sim. She just won the Mercury Prize. Congratulations I don't know to that, Little bro. Sim. She's a fantastic artist and she deserves all of her flowers. So guys, listen, let us know where we got it right. Let us know where we fucked up. And, you know, if we got any albums that you think shouldn't even be on this list, let us know in the comment section. Guys, thank you so much for, you know, for all the love on these videos. We love doing them for you. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.